saying that you're going around with your Yeah, well just think, what's that with dinner papers? You'll be down in the cage. Yeah, you just think, in a few weeks you're coming down with me. You won't be up. Won't ya? No, so I'm not going to work that pit. What are you going to work then? Well I don't know, do I? It's not going to be that pit. No, shall I tell you what? For what? If you have to really right to work down the pit. And for another? Don't have a wee little bug like you down there, eh, you wee?
Bird's going to be looking to an A. <laughs> <laughs>
again. In number 175, morning is broken. After three. One, two, three. Oh. No!
I thought I understood something about young people. Should be able to with all my experience.
Annie this time. Just the one. Sting? Not bad. Right, sit down. Yeah. Right, everyone got a book? <laughs> right. Anderson. Uh. Today we're going to talk about fact and fiction. <coughs> this time tell us a story about yourself. A fact that is really interesting. I don't know, sir. Anything at all, Anderson? Something that's happened here that sticks in your mind. Well, there's something. But it's daft, though. Well, you might as well get up and tell us. So I'll have a laugh, eh? Hey? Well, it was <coughs> when I was about nine or ten, and I'm in junior school, I think, or something like that. And I went down to Fowler's Pond with this other kid, Reggie played it for him. He didn't go for that school, he flitted and went away somewhere. Anyway, it was free. Yeah, it must have been free, because it's tadpole time there. And down there, it's swarming with tadpoles. Edges at pond are all black with them. And me and this other kid, we started to catch these taddies. It were easy. All you did was pick up these taddies, and you got a handful of taddies, I'm telling you. So we're messing about picking these taddies up and chucking them back in water and stuff. And we're on about taking some home. But we had no jam jars. So Reggie says, hey, why don't you take your wellies off? We can use them. It'll be all right until you get home. So I took my wellies off, and we started to fill them up with water, and then we started to fill them up with tannies. And I says to this kid, hey, why don't we have a competition? You have one wellie, I'll have the other, and we can see who can get most in. So he started to fill one wellie, and I started to fill the other. We must have been at it for hours. We just kept ladling them in until these tannies got thick and, and thicker, and there were no water left in the wellies, I bet you dare put one on. And I says, I bet you dare. So we decided we'd put one on each. We won't know. We kept wrecking two. And then running away. So we decided we'd toss up. And if we lost, they had to go first. Oh, I lost. Oh, you had to take your socks off as well. So I took my socks off. And I kept looking down at these Wellington full of tadpoles. And this kid is going to me, go on, you're frightened, you're frightened. I were and all. So I closed my eyes and I started to put my foot in. Oh. Oh. They were frozen. It was just like putting your feet into live jelly. Oh. And when my foot went in, they all came over the tops and dribbled out sides. Oh. And even worse, when my foot got down to the bottom, Sleep in many. 
I'll knock you to sleep. Shut up. Right, Casper. You can do the work for a change. You're going to get up just like Anderson did and tell us a story. I don't know. Well, could be in a few minutes to think of something like. Otherwise, the whole class is coming back at four. Oh, <laughs> It'll be the last call he ever makes. Anyway, what up, Casper? Is this stuff one? <laughs> What's so funny about that? Well, Tibbet? Well, it's our hope, sir. It's a guest room. I'm mad about it. Don't come out with anybody else now. He stays in and looks after his own. It's crackers for you. Better than you! Now then, Casper, Tibbet. Sit down. Come on, tell us about this show. Where'd you get it from? Found it. Where? In the wood. And what had happened to it? Was it injured? It was young. It must have tumbled up on its nest. And where do you keep it? In the shed. Oh, is that cruel? No. I don't keep it in the shed all the time. I let it fly out sometimes. Oh. Doesn't it fly away? It's all talks for a while. Of course not, sir. I've trained it. Oh, was it difficult? <coughs> yeah, of course. It's pretty proud. And, you know, it's very patient with it. Oh, come on. Come on out and tell us about it then. How did you set about training? Well, I started the training case when I had him about a fort now, and he was as fat as a pigle at first, and he can't do much for him until he got the weight down. So, gradually, he cut the thing down until he grew what down his teeth. I could tell Kesma King, so as soon as I went to the shed, they run the book of it for me. So, whilst they were feeding, I grabbed all of his dresses. <laughs>
biggest beating it's ever had. Move. What's going to be there? To be false. All right, same old story. Nobody's fault. I'll have to send a ferry to Mr. Grice. Stop <coughs> blubbering, Jasper. You're not dead yet. We'll be My argument down. If you're so keen on fighting, why don't you pick on someone on your own side? Because you're scared. You're just a bully. The classic example of a bully. What would you say if I pinned you down and smacked you across the face? Tell me that. <laughs> Of course she'd tell you that, McDowell. But you know what I do? I tell mine. And what's going to happen to your dad? Eh, hey, McDowell? And what's going to happen to you? Eh? Hey? Right, you, get back inside, get cleaned up, and get back to your next lesson. Hey, let that be the last time you even think about bullying. Understand? What's it all about, Casper? Why can't you? It's hard to say. It will say something about John. I'm your man. I let you know. All right, all right, all right, Casper. You still me now. I don't know. You're always in trouble. You know what it is? It's because I'm a big zombie, that's why. <laughs> Perhaps it's because you're a bad lad. Well, maybe I am sometimes. But I'm not the worst lad that you get when I play off this stuff. No, so you think you're just unlucky then? Oh, this, this morning in assembly, when I got wet before the sleep, I could not fall asleep, sir. I, I've been up since six. I to look for the and then come back, check on Kesley. Clearly he's been tired of doing that, sir. Right. I've been exhausted. Well, it's not getting stick for though, sir. You can't tell Grant, Mr. Grant's as well, but he'll kill you. Oh, um, in English, well, when I got pick on fidgeting. I mean, you can't not fidget when you've got that thing in life, man, can you, sir? No, I don't suppose you can. And the teachers never think it might be their fault, either. No, I don't suppose many do, like. Well, when you get drunk, you're not listening. I mean, you can't have not listening to stuff that's dead body, can you, sir? No, I don't suppose you can, man. What can you do these things? <coughs> what about the police? Been in trouble with them lately? No, sir. The phones? They've not been caught. The phones, sir, but every time I play some to the they always come to my house, sir. Even though they're not created, sir. That'll be right, lad. Yes, sir. Just think. In a few weeks, you'll be leaving school. Getting a job, meeting fresh people. Something to look forward to, isn't it? Have you got a job yet? No, not yet, but... You see that youth and poignant person this afternoon? <laughs> what kind of thing are you after? I don't know. So I have to get what I'm given, won't I? Well, you're looking forward to leaving soon. I am, but that doesn't, mark, that doesn't mean I'll have work, though, does it? So I'll get paid for it, won't I? Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, well, I'll have to blow the whistle, Casper. Oh, Casper? Sir? This is all yours. I'd like to come around and see you sometime. Yeah, of course, sir. Oh, do you like it, though? Yeah. Woods Avenue, isn't it? Yeah, 112, sir. All right, I'll get round some time if that's okay. Yeah, of course, sir. Yeah, I bet I'll see. 
and you'll let you bring on it.
Absolutely. Seems all right with you, though. That's just how I'm worried, sir. How do you mean? Well, when he first used to get there, when I first had him, I stood me out there to a big turf, soft a bit, he packed it in.
Do you? Smart do, smart not. Well, if you do, can you shin me? Junky for anyway. We should watch for a better food, but he didn't. He kept the money. Give me Jack! Do you want to do then? There doesn't seem a job in England. 